This is really important to note because we are today honored to stand with community media centers across our great empire state, including BRIC, MNN, QPTV, Staten Island Community Television. It's, it is uh, Scopeg TV. We've got North Shore Community Television. We've got the Alliance for Community Media New York. Who else is here? Stand up, be proud. We've got community media centers from all over gathered because these are vital services. And in an age of media consolidation, where there's less local journalism, where there's less local voices and less local journalism, we need to make sure we protect and enhance these vital nexuses of opportunity, these vital community media networks with studios and channels and platforms for the community to share. This is citizen journalism, and it needs to be protected because right now, streaming corporations and satellite, they are doing $5.45 billion worth of business in New York State. And right now, there's no local commitment. We've got champions for New York State that are standing up to make sure there's local jobs, local programming, and local commitment through the Community Media Reinvestment Act which is critical for our future, which makes New York State the leader in terms of digital literacy, local programming, civic engagement, revenue for the state, revenue for our municipalities, our cities and towns. This is not a consumer tax. This is an excise tax on the largest streaming corporations and satellite. And this will mean about $300 million annually for New York State. That's economic impact. That's local jobs. That's local content by, for, and about our communities. And uh, we thank so much our bill sponsors for the Community Media Reinvestment Act. That is A5900, A in the Assembly, S2581, A in the Senate. And we have champions here, including a leader in our state and the sponsor of S2581, the Community Media Reinvestment Act from Brooklyn, Senate District 21, Senator Kevin, Kevin S. Parker. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Made me feel like I'm starting for the Knicks. Uh, Jalen Brunson, you can take a night off. I got you. <laughs> Uh, I'm State Senator Kevin Parker. I represent the 21st District in Brooklyn, which is Flatbush, East Flatbush, Midwood, um, Flatlands, Mill Basin, and uh, Bergen Beach. I am the chairman of the Energy and Telecommunications Committee, as well as the majority whip in the New York State Senate. Glad to be, uh, you know, here with my colleagues uh, in government, as well as my president, Wes Jackson, the, the head of BRIC. Um, and Look, this is an important piece of legislation, particularly now when there are so many voices, when you look at um, social media, when you look at new channels, um, when you look at streaming and all the things that are happening, um, it's important that, that the place for community voices continues to be protected. Um, this new legislation really is to adjust, not creating something new, but protecting that something that has been there. For you know, several decades now, we, many of us have fought to make sure that um, community-based media um, had a role and that it was funded in a way um, you know, that, that supported um, what the community wanted to say. This is critical because you look at a city like New York City in particular, you have many cultures, many languages being spoken, you know, people from all, you know, all kinds of walks uh, of life, and this becomes a way for them to connect with other people in their community. Sometimes it's around language, sometimes it's around culture, sometimes it's around religion, sometimes it's regionally. Um, but whatever way that people want to connect with their neighbors, this becomes a way for that to happen. And so I'm sponsoring this legislation and hoping that we are able to uh, move it through the Senate again and get our partners in the Assembly to join along with us and get the governor to sign it so that we can, continue, that we can develop this new model of funding community-based media and making sure that those community voices um, continue to be strong uh, in, in terms of the things that whatever they want they want to talk about, right? Because that's that's really the point, is right is that other people should not be dictating for our community what is said. The community itself voice should be able to be able to be held um, loud and clear and strong. And so um, happy to be here with my colleagues. 
um, you know, who are um, s you know supporting the the, the legislation. Um, Max, I'm, I'm sorry, Michael. I don't know if you want me to introduce the next person. Are you gonna? Who am I introducing now? You ain't even tell me. You Delka? Okay. <laughs> So we're going to have the assemblywoman who is the, the, the assembly sponsor in, in, the, yep. in, the, in the state, the assembly sponsor in the assembly, right? The assembly sponsor uh, will come up uh, and, no, she's the assembly sponsor, aren't she? The, the co-sponsor, one of the sponsors, okay. There's a lot of sponsors, a lot of people, a lot of bills <laughs> right here. Yeah. Everybody wants to Yeah, everybody, 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 right. So um, assemblywoman, come up. Here we go. Thank you, thank you, Senator. Thank you, thank you, Senator. Uh, I am Yudelka Tapia. I am the assembly member for the 86th Assembly District in the west part of the Boogie Woo! Down Bronx. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, Bronx Strong. And that's where, where we have Bronx Nat, and one of the best uh, public and community uh, resources that we have in media for the Bronx. I am so happy to be here and to be part and uh, be a co-sponsor of the Community Media Reinvestment Act. Uh, that is a pivotal legislation that has the potential to revolutionize the landscape of media communication and civic engagement across a, our great state. Um, and we, we, with this legislation, what, what we're looking for is that we must provide platforms for residents to share their stories, advocate for their neighborhoods, and celebrate the rich diversity of our communities. Moreover, they, are ser they serve as invaluable educational resources, mentoring the next generation of media professionals. I went and I, and I have a walkthrough of the new uh, uh, spaces that BronzeNet have in the Bronx, and I was so proud to be part of that and see exactly how young uh, students, where they are getting the education, the education that they need and representing their community. Contributing to job growth and stimulating innovation in the media industry. But perhaps, most importantly, community, community, community media organizations are champions of democracy. They amplify the voices of those who are often overlooked, marginalized, shining a light on issues that matter most to our communities and holding those in power accountable. By supporting the Community Media Reinvest Reinvestment Act, we are not just investing in local media. We are investing in a thriving and inclusive democracy. Communication and community go hand in hand. And by empowering local media organizations, we are also empowering our communities to create positive change and drive progress forward. So let's go. Let's pass that bill this year. It's needed, and we will do it. And representing also from the Bronx, a co-sponsor of the Community Media Reinvestment Act. Thank you for your service to the people of New York. Senator Louis Sepulveda. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. The purest form of communication in any community is a public access television. Uh, the purest form in terms of transparency of any communication media is public access. The area that allows anyone Anyone who wants to engage in media activity, who wants to learn, public access. I can tell you this because I, about 20 years ago, 20 years ago became a public access producer. And I was uh, certified at BronxNet, who I deal mostly with. And, <laughs> and it was an excellent, fantastic experience. And we need public cable access. We need all the funds we can get. And according to some of the estimates, uh, this particular tax can bring between 250 and 500 million dollars to cable access television. Yep. I'm sure everyone here can use that money, correct? Oh, yes. Yes. So we're going to do our part here in, in the Senate uh, with my colleagues. I have uh, Senator Robert Jackson here as well. 
Uh, we're going to do everything we can to pass this because public access is a vital necessity in the communities that we represent, and we want to make sure that it's fully funded and fully functional. Thank you. And from the Bronx and Manhattan, a nexus, a bridge between our communities, he is a champion for the people as well because he's a runner. I see him running these streets. I run with him in these marathons and 10Ks, the Roscoe C. Brown. Public Public Senator Robert Jackson. Well, first, let me thank you for coming out here in Albany, and I love all of the signs that you have, public access. And you talk about the need, the needs are great. As you know, Bronx is spread out all over the place. In fact, uh, Bronx has so much to give. Kingsbridge Armory, can you imagine what we could do with the Kingsbridge Armory in the Bronx? Yeah. But also with BronxNet, you know, I'm, I'm the new state senator in the Bronx. Only as of last year, I didn't represent the Bronx, but I'm representing you now. Yeah. With, the, with my colleagues uh, on the left or colleagues on the right, it doesn't matter. What happens is the most important thing is that we need this bill to be passed. And here it is right here, yeah. if you haven't seen it. And so, what is, and I'll read it to you. Establish a tax on direct broadcast satellite services and video streaming services. Establishes a community media reinvestment fund imposes an excise tax on direct broadcast satellite services or video streaming services and provide monies for the community media invest reinvestment shall be distributed to the state general fund, municipalities, and community media organizations. Is that you? Yeah! Is that you? Yeah! Well, I'm willing to vote aye on this along with my colleagues. I ask you to do this publicize this and make sure that everyone reaches out to their elected state senators and elected state assembly members because we are the ones that have to pass the bill and then we will focus like they're focusing on me we will focus on the executive branch and that is our governor governor Hochul. so let's get it done we can't wait thank you, thank you. And from the borough of dreams, Queens, one of the coolest fellows I've met here in these hall corridors in Albany. Please welcome John Assemblyman, Lewis! Senator <laughs> John <laughs> Senator John Lou Bronx Science represent. <laughs> All right, John. RJ! <laughs> That's what RJ does for community media! I agree with everything everybody has said already. <laughs> and everything everybody's about to say. I will only add that, look, I mean, you know, we pride ourselves in democracy. Here in, here in New York and the United States of America. And what is the foundation of democracy? It's a constitution, it's the people, but nothing happens without good information. That's right. Good, accurate information, up-to-date information, news, everything that people need to know in order to make informed choices, especially when they go to vote. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. And nowadays, listen, you see all sorts of, all sorts of nonsense out there. <laughs> And sometimes it's difficult for people to know what to believe. Well, you know what? If they see it in our community media, that's what they're going to believe. Yes. The community media is closest to the people. The community media knows the pulse of what's happening. And the community media are made of people from the community. So people know that the community media can be trusted. And that is... Nothing's more important than that. In our day and age now, when so much is happening here in New York City and around the world, and so I'm gonna join with everybody here 
to make sure the Community Media Reinvestment Act is passed mm -hmm. yes. and that we put money into this so that we can support the community media and support pretty much our own constituents. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Bronx Net and Queens Public TV. Yeah. I had to do that. That's beautiful. Yeah. We are stronger together. Queens Public TV. Queens is in the house. 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 But you do realize the Bronx keeps creating it. <laughs> so, so this is about the creative economy, and it's true. You know, we are building bridges, right, across this great state. That's what we're doing. We are gathered here. This is community engagement, civic engagement at the heart of public access. And we have a show on BronxNet TV produced out of MNN and shared across our state called Makilala TV. And representing the Borough of Queens, the Borough of Dreams, assembly member, Stephen Raga. What does Makilala mean? What does Makilala mean to you? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to stand in, in full support uh, of, of the bill. Um, I, like I was mentioned, I represent Queens, uh, Jackson Heights, Woodside, uh, Elmhurst, one of the most uh, diverse parts of our, of our city and our state. So I know how important it is, like what everyone was saying, so that all our voices uh, throughout our state are, and our city are given that opportunity to speak uh, and share their stories and, sh and spread it across uh, the city and the state. So it's great to see how all the other elected officials from all the boroughs know how important this is. And I'm so proud to be a co-sponsor. I'm so happy to, uh, to stand uh, with the Alliance and everybody who's joined here uh, today. And I've seen firsthand uh, the importance uh, of public access to TV. Like was mentioned, I've, uh, uh, I've been uh, involved with the first uh, Filipino uh, uh, public access TV, Makalala TV, for uh, over 10 years now, so 10-year anniversary. And I've seen so important of like how our, our stories that are not told are finally told. Um, and that's through all of our communities uh, throughout Queens. And also, like was mentioned, during how it is today, where people uh, take their, their information and their media from um, especially with social media, you don't know what your algorithm is even going to give you. Uh, last night, uh, the people I watched the Super Bowl with were looking at social media. We're getting a different algorithm on Usher's performance. And I'm like, was it good? Is it bad? I don't know. Is it good? So it, it's so important that on the ground, we know that those that, that we have our public access resources uh, that are telling our stories, prioritizing our communities on the ground, especially those that are traditionally unheard and who are voiceless. So thank you so much for our communities for coming up here. I'm so proud to support this bill. And in 2024, we're going to pass it here in the Capitol. So there we go. Thank you, Assemblymember Raga and all of our co-sponsors and sponsors, a round of applause for our state leaders who are championing this bill, the Community Media Reinvestment Act. And there are people across our state that leverage the services that we provide at our community media centers. They take the media education workshops and classes that we provide and get certifications so that they can be a part of positive transformation in our communities, so that they can share their vision and their message with the world via our channels, which are streaming from our communities to the world. And one of those folks that has taken classes at Brick and at BronxNet and is engaged is Miss Kitty Rose, who does a number of shows. Why don't you come up here and just talk about the importance of having access to studios, channels, classes? Oh, wow. I'm never lost for words. <laughs> Uh, yes, as Max Ma uh, Noble mentioned, I am a public access producer that got my start in 2016 at BronxNet, but because of what New York makes available, I was able to take classes at Brick, and I was able to put my show that's on the BronxNet channel on Brick and Manhattan Network at the same time, and I'm coming for Queens. <laughs> 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 but I mean, I, I've, I, 
I've done so much in six years slash four years due to COVID because of public access and it's given me a voice in the community where last year I won the free speech award at Brick. Again, allowing us to have the opportunity to not only have a voice but to make a difference in our community where literally I get stopped in the street on a regular basis where the p people in the community say, I've seen you on television and you made a difference. I saw you on television and I was affected by what you said. So not only am I filling my own spirit but I'm feeling the spirit within our community. So that's a beautiful opportunity. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so sign our bill. <laughs> yes, co-sponsor the bill. Sign on to the bill. Send your message of support for the bill. You can do it on our websites. You can send a message of support. And I am so proud to stand strong with our allies across this great state, including Rosalind Nevis and Al Harris from QPTV. <laughs> Please welcome Community Development Manager from QPTV, Roz Nieves, and Board Member Al Harris. Sharing is caring. Bronx is holding my sign. That's what's up. <laughs> Woo! Listen, ladies and gentlemen, let us stand on the right side of history and support community media centers throughout New York State. Give a round of applause for that. Throughout New York State. You may ask, why do we need support for existing community media centers and future centers? Because it's a beacon of hope, a promise to prioritize your voice, to amplify the stories of the marginalized, and to strengthen the very foundation of democracy. It's a pivotal moment in New York's commitment to fostering vibrant, inclusive, and democratic media ecosystems in our communities and throughout New York State. So that's beyond the five boroughs. By allocating resources to support municipalities and community media centers, we empower grassroots journalists, storytellers, and activists and reclaim the narrative to redefine the media landscape across the state from the ground up, because that's what public access is about, from the ground up. Give a round of applause for that. Yes, yes, yes. If you ask, if you ask my colleagues and peers, access producers and providers one simple question, how does the community benefit from media centers throughout New York State? You will hear the echoes of the power of the First Amendment and how it goes hand in hand with television studios, training courses, and access to equipment and services that enriches their lives by the content they create. Hyperlocal voices with content made for, by, and about you. Give a round of applause for that. I found my voice many years ago as a young police officer. I began my relationship with five access centers in the boroughs of New York City, producing shows for the NYPD with BronxNet, QPTV. At that time, it was called BCAT, Manhattan Neighborhood Network, and Staten Island Community Television. Utilizing public access to build relationships with the NYPD and the community as a community affairs and crime prevention specialist. I'm going to close with how important it is to keep that door open to the community. You have to have a bridge of communication. In an era where digital platforms dominate the media landscape, let's please recognize the urgent need to bridge the digital divide and ensure that every community has access to the tools and resources they need to tell their own stories and to participate fully in the digital age. And with that, I'm going to toss it to Al Harris, a QPTV board member for over 20 years. Give a hand for that. Round of applause. Please tell, please tell how you got started with public access and how it benefits the community. Al. Well, well let me be brief, but let me be clear. Uh, it, it has been mentioned that uh, community media is important to free speech and to the quality of communication in our communities. And I learned that a number of years ago, in fact, about 25 years ago when I started at Brooklyn uh, Community Access Center, um, I started as a producer. Um, and then uh, as I worked with my employer, I actually wound up in Queens producing, producing some programming uh, for my uh, company. Uh, on things like public safety 
and uh, energy conservation. And we were able to inform the community through these programs that we were able to produce. Uh, and this is because of the high level of professionalism that I encountered when I did get to these stations, when I did get to see people like, um, like Michael and like Dan Leon, who, who lead these community organizations with staff members who assist uh, community residents in, in sounding that voice and being able to, to produce and promote. Uh, you see, Community access television is about more than just uh, equipment and space. And, and that has to be clear. It's about more than that. It's about, it's about quality training. It's about collaborative opportunities. Uh, it, it's about so much more. And it's something that should be promoted. It's something that should be advanced. So I'm glad to say that my senator, uh, Senator Parker in Flatbush, was the lead sponsor, and I'm so glad for that, but I'd like to see so many more uh, to, to support this bill and to encourage uh, the community residents, residents and others to use, utilize community media. Thank you. Thank you, QPTV. And together, community media keeps us connected, and right across the high bridge, a span connects us. We could walk across, ride our bike across, as. You know, some might, and we have Zenaida Mendez, the director of MNN El Barrio. Please welcome a warrior for community media. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Zenaida Mendez, director of Barrio Five House Community Media Center. And I have to tell you, the main thing that we focus is to train the next generation of media makers. That generation of media makers, they're really going to continue the work that we started 40, 45 years ago. All of us together, we have to make sure that those voices are heard, that the voices of people of color. And one very important issue, we broadcast in many, many languages. So it's not it's in English and in Spanish, which is giving the opportunity to all of those who really, really have something to say continue to communicate what's going on in our local community, what's going on on our community boards, what's going on on the elected official, what's going on in every single organization in the different part of our borough, which is no one else going to give the voices to those, those voices. So to us, it's critical that this bill is passed in order for us to continue to do what we do, educate, inform, and making sure that the new generation would keep in, on track, keeping our voices heard. So thank you so much and on behalf of the Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Now I'd like to introduce one of our producer, Clara Diaz, who really does a special show. And without us, MNN, I don't know where she will go. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. If you're here to support community media, say yes. 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 Great. I work in the field of mental health, and thank you to Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I, I have been able to be the voice of those who have no voice. So I'm here, please, asking to sign for this app because we really need this in our community. Thanks to Manhattan Neighborhood Network. I, you know, I do a lot of work for people who have mental health issues in the community to prevent suicidal, to prevent domestic violence and other things. So I'm here to support community media. Thank you. So BK is here today at Community Media Day of Action, and I am so proud to welcome to the mic the president of Brick TV, Brick Arts Media, Wes Jackson. All right. Thank you very much, Michael, uh, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I, I just want to echo everything. I've been standing here listening to everyone, feeling so empowered and feeling energized. I want to make three, three quick points. We are the voice of the people. A lot of times, the only time the people can see themselves are on, these, on, on our channels. We've had uh, uh, Maritza, our director of government affairs, knows the story I'm about to tell of a Haitian family who was only allowed to watch BCAT because grandma, one day flipping the channels, heard Haitian Creole and said, I don't want you watching that American stuff on Channel 4 and all of that. Stay there because our people are represented there. That's how important this is. Now, is it doing, you know, millions of numbers, Super Bowl numbers? No, but that's not what's important. 
is that people can see themselves. And once people can see themselves, they can reach their full potential. And that's really what everybody is talking about here. That's what we're all committed to, no matter what borough we come from. It's almost irrelevant. The second thing I'm going to talk about, I want to talk a little bit about the business. Michael said it before. This, this is a tax. This is not a tax that's going to be passed on to the consumer, right? Am I right? We, we wrote that amendment to make sure that this doesn't become a punishment to the people. We are for the people. We want these streaming companies, these satellite services, to pay their fair share. Those wires are in the ground. You know, uh, uh, you know, a uh, uh, brother Tony Riddle who's in the back taught me this because I'm new to this, right? So I'm the rookie here. Those wires are in the ground. Those zeros and ones are going through the cables. You should pay up because it's not lining our pockets. We're not going to Cabo anytime soon. I don't know about Michael. I'm not going. Maybe later. But this money is going right back into the people. For every dollar that comes in, by my estimation, it's eight dollars worth of value to all of you. So this is a win for everyone. And my last point that I want to make is, uh, I forget who was saying it, we have to build it from the ground up. Because all we're doing is letting people tell their stories and empowering people. Those people are going to become the filmmakers, the DPs, the screenwriters, who then feed all of these services. So if you don't feed us at the bottom, you're hurting yourself. You're playing yourself, as we would say in the culture. You're going to choke the life out of it. So feed us so we can feed the people and feed the entire economy. This, is, this, this bill makes sense. It's logical. It's fair. And uh, as the leader of BRIC and uh, uh, Brooklyn Free Speech, we are so, so super proud to be here. And with that, I'm going to shut up and I'm going to hand it over to our director of community media, media Mr. Leon Taylor. Thank you. I've been doing this for a long time. I've had the privilege of working with community members at every level of community media. And quite often we talk about the stories that they're able to share in front of the camera. The story that I appreciate most is the stories that happen behind the cameras, the training that goes into their ability to learn how to create content, put it on the air, learning cameras, learning studios. And in every community media center across the state, I'm sure they have similar stories to ours in Brooklyn. Uh, a gentleman named Cliff, uh, Curtis Boone. These are ordinary people who walked in and said, oh, I'm curious about that camera. I want to learn that. Cliff started 15 years ago as a member of our community. Today, he's on his way to Washington, DC to work at CNN as a studio director. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Curtis Boone started over 10 years ago at Brick, learned how to use a camera, volunteered a lot to help other people. Today, he's out in Hollywood as a director of cinematography, selling program to A&E. Mm. These are the stories that you don't often hear about the resources of community media and the value of teaching community how to use the tools to create the shows that they make. It creates the avenue for someone who didn't pay to go to college to do it, to elevate themselves and their family, and to participate in a meaningful way in the, lead, in the media landscape. And like I said, this is not a story unique to Brick. I learned it in Manhattan. I see it in the Bronx. It's a story that is told in every community media center across the state. It's why it's important to invest in community media, especially as, as our technology continues to change and delivery services adjust. The people deserve to grow as the, as the, as the businesses that we are part of grow. So thank you for coming out and supporting. And again, support the Community Media Reinvestment Act you're investing in your community when you do it. All right. Thank you, Leon. So it's aspirational, as Leon pointed out. These are opportunities for our youth to get career building experiences, our students, opportunities for our public. And so many BronxNet interns, including one who's here today in high school, started at Bronx as an intern. Now he's a business leader, and he wants to start public access in Rockland County. Noah George. Round of applause for Noah George, as well as anchors now who started at BronxNet, their first TV experience at BronxNet, Yelo Uberes at Univision, weekend anchor, Darlene Rodriguez at NBC, engineers who are now at CBS, like Leslie Peggett, who started at BronxNet in high school, Emmy award-winning animators who got their shot, their start, at places like you see here today, community media centers like Brick, BronxNet, QPTV, Scopeg TV, all across this land. And right here also, his first TV show was on BronxNet, a culinary adventure where you weave mom and pop restaurants into this wonderful tale, Bronx Flavor, 
started at BronxNet. And the host of this show went on to the Food Network and the Discovery Channel's Science Channel. He's a Nat Geo explorer, reporter, and he is a friend of community media. Please welcome Justin Fornell, <laughs> AKA Baron Ambrosia. <laughs> Hey everybody, how are we, everybody feeling all right today? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great to be here in Albany, it's great to be here. And, and I'm very excited just to contribute a small thing to this conversation from the creative perspective. Uh, as Michael did mention, uh, I've been fortunate enough to make a career out of production. And uh, right now I have a show called Unexplained Unexplored on the Discovery Channel that you can see in 170 countries around the world. Yeah. And I feel, and, uh, but I will say for the success I've had professionally, I've never been as happy mm or creatively fulfilled as I was doing Bronx Flavor, BronxNet. And I'll explain why. It's because when you get to the international national level production, there's so many cooks in the kitchen <laughs> that oftentimes the thing that was funky, the thing that had a lot of soul gets homogenized and drained because there's so many people who have so much interest in it. If you think about, you know, perhaps someone's mixtape that had all this fire, all this energy, <laughs> and then they get this big recording contract, and you're like, who is that? Who's that on the radio? And the person that you love, the musician that you loved, is really no more. And that's kind of how I feel about a lot of the work that I've gotten to do. Because places like BronxNet, places like community media, there are these playgrounds. They're playgrounds where you can discover, you can elaborate. Beautiful creators like Rena Valentin, who I got to play with and learn with. And then you have something that is unique because you're playing to that community. Oftentimes when I go to a big board meeting and I say, I want to do this story about the ancient land of Punt in Somalia, they say, but what about Mod Pa Henderson in Nebraska? Mm. You know, and that would be it. You're like, but you know, so if you're at a place like Bronx State, you are playing to your community. Mm. And oftentimes, one, one nice thing that did come out of Bronx Flavor, of all the great things, was from that show that was about these small mom and pop immigrant, often immigrant owned eateries, people were coming from New Jersey, from New York, people who would email me and say, I didn't think I could go to the Bronx. Because oftentimes, the media perception of the Bronx is something that is not marketed by Bronxites. No doubt, no doubt. Oh, it's the toughest place in the world. It's this, it's rough. It's, it's also, it's beautiful, it's fun, it's exciting. It's a place to have adventures. And even within the Bronx, I would do a show about an Albanian restaurant. I'd get an email from a Jamaican family who said, we didn't know we could go there. But we went and we were welcomed. So that's the idea is that when programming is made for the community within the community, it can actually accomplish things for the people who live there. And if it's only told from outsiders, guess what? They're gonna take the cheapest thing and they're gonna throw it, oh, the Bronx is dangerous, the Bronx is loud, the Bronx is crazy. As opposed to people within, it's like, well, you know, we live here, this is a beautiful place, this is where people raise children, this is where dreams are formed. And so with that being said, shows that went after we made Bronx Flavor, CNN, Anthony Bourdain came and did a show about the Bronx. Andrew Zimmern came and did a show about food in the Bronx. And this is all because things like BronxNet were, had a track record and they were watching me like, oh, that's not the Bronx that I thought. There's more than, you know, hip hop and the Yankees. There's more. <laughs> we can go there. And so that's why it's so important that the Bronx and places like the Bronx and any place that has community media continues to not only claim their own narrative, but form their own narrative, tell their own stories from within and let that be what the world sees, because that is the truth. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Correcting the misrepresentations. Community media is authentic TV, and we are stronger together. And from Strong Island to the Bronx, North Shore Community Television, welcome, please, Erica Bradley. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, there you come on. <laughs> um, first of all, I want to thank BronxNet for doing this and all the assembly members and senators who have sponsored, co-sponsored. It's really amazing. Um, thanks for everybody being so excited and fired up. Um, the reality for me is though, like, I, I don't want to be here. I want to be in my office. I want to be in my studio. I want to be working with my community. And right now my doors are shut because I need to be here because I'm too concerned about in five years will I be able to do pro programming with my community. What's going to happen in five years? That's not 10 years, that's not 20 years. Friday I went and I spoke to Southampton and I spoke to East Hampton. Yesterday I went to Rhinebeck. We're all in the same boat, five years, 10 max. Like this streaming bill is gonna save us. 
it's certainly going to help us, but I think it's going to save us. It's serious. And it's not just for our community media centers. That money goes to the municipalities. It goes back to the community. It's going back to you. So it's really urgent to reach out to your legislators and support this bill. Thank you. Thank you so much. I've been so proud to work with so many great people across this state, and this brings us together, Community Media Day of Action, and I'd like to welcome up the chair, the president of the Alliance for Community Media, New York chapter, Anthony Aria. Michael, you're just the best. I, I love your leadership, and um, uh, I'm Anthony Arian. I represent all of New York State, actually, uh, from the Alliance for Community Media of New York. It's an affiliate of the national ACM. So it's acmny.org. And um, as I said, I represent all, I'm very proud. Uh, I'm from Queens originally, actually, but I live in the country now. And I worked in the film business as a gaffer for 25 years as a IATSE, a, na a neighbor gaffer. And when I did uh, my local government and educational channel as a one-man band, I was sucked in by the beauty of this. I wasn't you know, on, on a big crew. I wasn't selling some little product on a commercial. This was my community I was affecting. People were getting their information, participating in the government, say, you didn't think about this with this law. Um, and the, the local educational channel I ran for 17 years, because they didn't have a budget themselves, I said, I'll, I'll run it along with the other. So I just worked myself to death, but it was a passion, because I see what, it, what good it does in the community. So in those two channels, I, I, we didn't have a public access channel per se, but I taped everything I could in the town, all, all of the, the events, the concerts, that slice of life, and I was so hooked by how much good it does in my local community. So we're, as, as Erica was saying, we are really in danger of losing uh, the, our funding because you know the, the cable industry was the only one being taxed for all these years. This bill changes that, the Community Media Reinvestment Act. And it, it is urgent because as chair of, uh, of this you know, organization for all these years, I've seen many small stations, particularly in upstate New, New York, go dark. And we have a few that may not even last out the year without this bill. And, and these are big community media centers and small ones in small towns. So I, I feel for the cities and I feel for the towns because I've lived in, in both. So we really need to support this bill. And the, the point is that 30 other states have been taxing digital media. Oh. Is New York going to be the last one to, to take this money? This enormous amount of money that's going to help you know, all of our local taxes and the community media that exists or, or needs help in getting going, and the jobs that will be created. Mm -hmm. I sit on the Northeast Region Board. I know many people who from North, from New York originally that had to work in Massachusetts or, or Connecticut or, or New Hampshire because we didn't have community media jobs here. What's wrong with creating local jobs in your town with the money that comes back to your town by population. This, this is genius. It's going to help, help educational co channels come back. It's going to help us in so many ways. Please support this bill. You go to the portal, acmny.org, and support the bill right along. Thank you, Arathia Arion. And we uh, do have forward-thinking thought leaders here on the national level for community media. And please welcome with me to talk about really how this bill is for the entire state, rural communities, upstate, downstate. Please welcome the former president of the Alliance for Community Media, Anthony Riddle. so good to see all of my sisters and brothers in community media here together. It makes me feel really good. It makes me feel like I'm with the people that really understand what this is about. We all have different reasons for being here. We all have different reasons that brought us to public access in the first place, whether it's a story, whether it's an aspiration, whether it's a cause. Uh, we all have our own story. So I wanted to tell you mine 
and why it's so important to me. All of you have heard about Juneteenth by now. There was a time when that was a very unknown um, occurrence, except in small circles. It's become a big deal, but I want to say why that's an important thing. Uh, sometime January 1st, 1861, uh, President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation that declared that all people should be freed from slavery. In June of 1863, the word finally made it to Galveston, Texas. That meant for two and a half years, uh, people were born into slavery that should have been born free. It meant for two and a half years, people died in slavery that should have died free. It meant for two and a half years, um, people gave their sweat to a system that chose systematically not to give them the information they needed to be free people. And that's why we're here. If you remember during the pandemic, all of our stations stepped up to help the communities to make it through at a time when they really needed us. But the only reason we were able to do that is because we had the resources in place and because we had the technology in place, because we had the technological understanding of how these things could be used to benefit the community. We didn't wait until there was a pandemic and then go ask for these resources. These resources were in place. So when we have shows that are fun, you know, that express our various cultures, that are funny, that are enjoyable, these are all good things and they're all important to our communities uh, as, as we do these shows. But never forget that this is not just a fun endeavor. This is something that's important to us as people for our survival, for the survival of our communities. So I'm really glad to see the, the variety of, of communities that are represented here. The small communities, I was just talking to a gentleman that represents 19 municipalities, and they're all small. They have a very different need than Brooklyn does. But he represents that need the way that you represent the need uh, in your community. Similarly, this is an event that's taking place all across the country. As has been mentioned, there's like 30 different states that have already passed similar legislation. In fact, we sort of based our legislation on what was happening in Massachusetts. And so there's other people who are looking at what you're doing here, and you're providing the example of how they go forward too. So although we're extremely local, we are part of a national movement, and that this is, this is very important what you do here. We have to succeed at it. People want to know how, how they can do it, and they want to be able to set these, keep these networks up in the places where they are. So finally, you know, it's one thing to say, let's support the bill, but the way you support the bill is you go and you talk to the legislators, and you get letters to the legislators from the people in your community that say that, th that this is important. They want to pass the bill. The ones we've talked to want to pass the bill, but they want to know that you can develop the kind of community support that will translate into the support of their colleagues and that will help them get this bill passed. We have to do it this time. We can't wait till next year. We've already been at it a little while. We've got to get it in the budget, and we've got to get them to pass it during this session. Um, I'd like to see you all again. I hope we don't have to do it this way. <laughs> Uh, anyway, but thank, thank you all for coming here, and thank you for being so supportive. Thank you for thank, thank you for Michael and Anthony, and I won't name everybody, but everybody who's put so much effort into pulling this all together. It's really a beautiful thing. Thank you, Tony Riddle, and thank you all for participating in community media gathered here today. You are community leaders, and a community leader who does a show at BronxNet. She premiered her first show just last week on BronxNet television after taking a media education class and getting a certification. So proud to have you at the BronxNet Media Technology Studios in the South Bronx with advanced production stages, innovation labs, and more. Please welcome Shaniqua Charles. Thank you so much. Wow, this is absolutely amazing, the show of community that comes together when we need something done and I just want to say can I share a quick story with y'all I know we've been here for an hour right but the quick story is that I've been in the community as an organizer and an activist and a leader in social justice issues for over 30 years the executive director of my own organization 
for 10 years and the pivot and beautiful turn that that all took when being reached out to from BronxNet and saying the things that you're doing in community need to be highlighted, just with our show airing for the first time last weekend, has increased the visibility in the work that we do when it comes to making sure that young people are not being killed in the street. When it comes to fires happening in our community and we're raising money to bury people's loved ones to ensure the fact that the elders in the community feel safe when they're walking the street with our young people because for so long they've been um, hard-hearted in the streets because our young people didn't know how to interact with our elders. So I want to impress upon those who have the opportunity to make sure that this bill passes. I've worked on much legislation over the years, city, state, and federal. This bill makes sense. This bill makes sense. If the bill makes sense, say yes, yes. Yes yes. Yes, yes. yes, yes. The bill makes sense. It also ensures that the quality of our voices get to be heard by our people and that our stories get to be told in the manner in which they deserve. Another welcome pivot into my life is my beautiful and wonderful daughter, Miracle, who is also a co-host on that show. And in a couple of weeks, who is 14 years old, who is the 99th percentile in the nation for math, who is college level reading and comprehension, who started her first business at the age of six, second at the age of nine, and now at the age of first 13, now 14, because she recently had a birthday, can also say that she's the co-host of a TV talk show that you can go ahead and bridge the gaps back in our right. communities and rebuild. So to all of the people who haven't signed on as a sponsor yet, a couple of y'all I spoke to personally, let's do the right thing here and stand on the right side of history and ensure that public access remains public, it remains for the people, and that we all get an opportunity to see ourselves represented by us. Thank you so much. Thank you for amplifying opportunities for our youth and communities. Shaniqua Charles and community producers gathered here today. We also have, at our community media centers, strategic partnerships with health anchor institutions, higher education, colleges, universities, schools, and elected leaders, and more. And representing in our borough of universities in the Bronx, the college uh, that is part of the City University of New York, Lehman College, and the music department, distinguished professor of excellence at Lehman College, please welcome one half of the Bacon Brothers, Professor Michael Bacon. So I'm here to bring a little bit of Hollywood cachet. Um, I actually asked my brother to come up with me today, and he was too busy, but um, by the authority vested in me, Everybody in this room is now one degree of separation from Kevin Bacon. <laughs> so very quickly, the, um, the, the, the event that BronxNet and Lehman College has participated in is called the Bronx Beat Battle. And the first Bronx Beat Battle was between Lehman and Osis College. And now it's getting bigger and bigger so we're going to try to move it into some of the other boroughs. So QPTV, we're coming for you. Sounds good. Brick, we're coming for you. Be ready. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. And I just want to say, I mean, the objective correlative happens on community media. It's fresh. It's really representative. It's authentic. Let's bring like the Dionysian and the Apollonian together. Please welcome a leader on BronxNet TV. Modern Odyssey program, which we want to share with you, QPTV, and our boroughs. Please welcome Dr. Despina Afantuli. Thank you, Michael. Um, it's an honor for me to be here today for the second co consecutive year uh, and participate in the Community Media Advocacy Day. We're here at Capitol Building for a very important reason. We're here to support the Community Media Reinvestment Act, a bill in both the New York State Senate and the New York State Assembly that would support the future of public, educational, and governmental community media around New York State. New York State Senate Bill 2581 and New York State Assembly Bill A5900 proposed the installation of an excise tax on large streaming and satellite corporations 
with part of the revenue going to public, educational, and governmental community media. Citizens in a democratic society make informed, conscious choices through media, express themselves freely on policy issues, and ensure that elected representatives maintain their oaths and commitments. That is what community media and networks like BronxNet are all about. It's local citizen journalism. Citizens have equal access to the technology, studios, and local multi-platform channels to help foster an informed and engaged society. While the media, as the fourth estate, have a great power and responsibility in a democratic society, community media contribute highly to re-engaging communities on the periphery. For this reason, it's crucial to let the media, including the community media, flourish with legislation that supports their existence and development. I thank BronxNet and especially Michael Max Nobby for offering me the opportunity to share my modern odyssey program by BronxNet, reporting untold, underreported stories um, that matter. And remember, it's not only about the survival of the media, it's all about saving quality journalism, including community quality journalism, and journalists who strive for excellence. Support investigative journalism, and specialist reporting. Free media indicate the quality of democracy, and democracies thrive when there are better opportunities for citizens, greater outcomes for communities, and more just societies. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Akhlantuli. And also from BronxNet, we're going to bring a group of people because I am told, well, our channels are going to stay open, but we have to clear this Senate gallery, unfortunately. But I want to bring up Rita Valentin, who spotlights the arts and culture, Michael from Scopeg TV, and Joseph Aldularge from Queens QPTV, as well as Walter Sanchez and Rich. All right, so I'm going to keep it really short, okay? Uh, I'm Rina Valentin. I'm the host and creative producer of Open on BronxNet Television, one of BronxNet's flagship shows. I've been on air for 17 years, going on 18 in May, advocating arts, culture, women empowerment, youth development, mental health awareness, and domestic violence awareness. And uh, I want to say I've had the privilege of serving in the capacity of providing a platform for local artists and local arts organizations. And, um, um, while doing that, we have also served in the capacity of raising the next generation of media makers in which, as far as I'm concerned, we are the culture of media in the Bronx. Good afternoon. Good communication is good medicine. My name is J.J. Bularaj, I'm a pediatrician, and I just completed 41 years as a chairman of pediatrics in our great city. Thank you, yeah, 41 years. Four years ago, the hospital came to me and asked me to improve communication between doctors and patients. So, have you ever been in an emergency room? Have you ever had a family member in an emergency room? Have you ever been admitted to an emergency room? Have you been admitted to the hospital? Absolutely, and if you have seen a doctor come to you and quickly say to you, I'm busy and I have to rush out of here, I'll try to come back, or didn't even introduce themselves. Well, the hospital wanted to increase the ability of physicians to speak to their patients. And they came to me and asked me. I put little study groups together, but that only gets 10 or 15 people. How do you reach thousands of people through video? I then found Queens, Queens Public TV. They trained me. They gave me access to the equipment. And I went back and formed multiple movies to train physicians. And there are people behind the lines that were so nice to me and enabled our community residents to benefit from their doctors being trained. So Steve was here in the back. And here Roz, 
a mentor, really, to me to get this job done, and we impacted thousands of community residents. Good communication is good medicine. Queens Public TV. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, you want to say something? Come, come. Scopeg TV Upstate is in the house, everybody. Uh, we're quite different from most of your uh, organizations. Uh, Scopeg Access uh, actually uh, has 16 small municipalities uh, in Schoharie County and the western part of Schenectady County. Uh, we uh, serve uh, because there is very little access uh, to uh, media in our areas. Uh, we're rural. Uh, we're actually part of the Appalachian Regional uh, Commission of Appalachia. And uh, our largest community is about 5,000 in uh, population. Uh, our uh, access uh, covers the county board of supervisors meetings so that our local rural residents can see their representatives and respond to them uh, at their convenience uh, on demand. Uh, we cover local uh, town boards and uh, uh, village board meetings, boards of education meetings. Uh, we've trained teachers uh, to uh, use uh, video in their classrooms. And uh, at this point, we're trying to expand. Uh, and uh, this bill uh, will absolutely help us uh, to, for example, hire additional videographers uh, so that we can cover local events, parades, our fair, uh, and uh, all the important uh, elements of our community life. No. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Scope TV. Ray Allen, Cheryl Timms, Nellie Van Dyke, and we've got Cool Clyde and Donald. Let's close the show together here, guys. Yes. Come on up here. And Walter Sanchez, come on up here. Cheryl Timms, where are you? Mental health and you on BronxNet. Come, Ray Allen, world's indigenous people on BronxNet TV. That's right, world's indigenous people. Are, we were the first, one of the first access producers on BronxNet. Uh, world's indigenous people won the first beta award for educational programming, and we are still here. So please support community media. Hi, I'm Walter Sanchez. I'm, I, uh, I publish a number of a collection of community weekly newspapers throughout Queens and Brooklyn, Rockland County, and, and Rockaway. And uh, we have a lot in common, although we're commercially owned by my company, we have a lot in common. Where else do you see what's going on at the uh, Oakdale Library? Where else do you see where there's a street fair or the night market? We need media like this. Crucial, crucial. I'm really inspired that the legislators were passionate about this. They, they see the light. Now we just have to get a few more to sign on. And you're right, we have to get them to sign on to this bill, not just vote yes. Yay! Thank you so much. Um, my name is Donald Hyman. I'm with uh, Open Stage Media here in Albany, upstate New York. And you know what? Everybody here, we winning. We are winning. And to quote James Baldwin real quickly, those who say it can't be done are usually interrupted by those doing it. That's us. And to close, not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing can be changed unless it's faced. I'm out of here, peace and chicken grease. I want to thank God for being here today, BronxNet, saves lives. This is so important. I've been with Bronxton for almost 20 something years. I've had my own show here and I still do broadcast on this wonderful network. It brings hip hop to religion and all kinds of important 
informative information to the world. So it's so important that we continue to fight for this bill so we can continue arming our community because it's so important to get your information. I started here for grassroots information to empower the people. And I would rather be here at public access than a major network because this gives you the foundation on how to start your own program and to appreciate what you have. So with that being said, I want to thank BronxNet and many of the other public access producers that are here. I started out with Rena Valentine as well, Dr. Bob Lee, and I was also responsible for bringing the Hip Hop Museum to the Bronx. Yeah. You know, somewhere I read a long time ago that freedom ain't free. I will also add that knowledge ain't free either. It comes with a cost. It seems I was here just last year talking about my show, my experience, and what BronxNet meant to me. My name is Cynthia Timms. I am the mental, I am the host and producer of Mental Health and You on BronxNet, uh, which opens up and talks about mental wellness, particularly in communities of color from a peer perspective. I say that to say because it seems now more than ever that we need BronxNet, we need community access. We need so much because you're so, it, it makes a difference, y'all. I can't put it more simpler, it makes a difference. Like my colleagues said, I run into people all the time who said, I saw you on TV and I look forward to you because you make a difference. You make my skies blue when I'm feeling a certain way. You make me feel happy when I'm feeling sad. And I'm just so happy to be here and be able to come here. This, this is a testimony. And then we need to continue because it's necessary. Necessary like blood. It's necessary like air. It's necessary like the DNA that's in our system. Thank you so much, Michael, and thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. See, uh, Nelly Van Dyke. Sí. Mi nombre es Nelly Van Dyke, soy en español, soy conductora y productora del programa Dejando Huellas en Ti. Estamos aquí, ¿verdad?, con Ingrid, que ella está conmigo en el programa para apoyar a BronxNet, porque estamos muy contentos, ¿verdad?, de informar nuestra comunidad en español y en Garifuna somos hondureños. Nos sentimos muy contentos de la oportunidad que BronxNet nos está dando a nosotros para trabajar con nuestra comunidad. En el tiempo de COVID, mientras todo estaba cerrado, yo seguía, ¿verdad?, produciendo desde mi casa y de mi trabajo. Así que estamos muy contentos de esa oportunidad. Así que Dios los bendiga a todos y gracias al director también. Yes, yes. My name is Steve Akira. I'm a psychologist that does a show on BronxNet. Thank you, thank you to Mr. Ma Michael Max Nobby. Give him a round of applause real quick. I do a show called Reach Out. My co-host is with the New York Yankees for 50 years. His name is Ray Negron. He's the story of the ultimate second chances. In 1973, real quick, he spray painted graffiti on Yankee Stadium. He got caught, got arrested, but George Steinbrenner, that just bought the Yankees at that time, brought him up to his office, read him the riot act, but made him a Yankee bat boy. For 50 years, he's been with the Yankees. Him and I do a show on BronxNet, not at Yankee Stadium, in the community of the Bronx, giving second chances to so many people. And today, I'm proud to say, as a psychologist, through their programming, through BronxNet, I had 15 people last year go through their programming that weren't doing anything during the, during the pandemic. Now they're here doing shows. I want to, John Michaels right there, give him a round of applause. Alex DeMello's right back here too. And the staff here is amazing. It's giving opportunities and second chances to people that need it. God bless, thank you so very much. Thank you everybody. Protect community voices. Support community media. 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 Thank you, everyone. We'll see you down at the pop-up studio. Meet us by the wall by the well.